Everybody knows of the famous dark side force user known as Darth Vader. But did you know during the Clone Wars, he actually had a Padawan and a pretty good friend who's also a force user and was a part of the Jedi, but left the Jedi because the Jedi was tripping. So one can say she became like an independent entity known as Fulcrum. She has sword play and all that good stuff like other beings do. And when it comes to her connection with the force, it seems throughout the years she gets stronger as time goes by. She's one of the rare beings that actually survived Order 66, even surviving all the way past Darth Vader died and everything. She's one of those characters that has become popular over the years and for a good reason. She's pretty cool. When you can pick up people with your mind, your hand to hand seems to be irrelevant, but she seems to be really strong, stronger than normal. Thanks to her abilities being ample with the force, but to punch through beings that wear armor. This is why you see force users jump pretty high. I would personally love a Star Wars game where you can put away your weapons and just use straight hands. Kind of like how in God of War you can use weapons or then you can put away the weapons and just use your fists. Because you can't tell me moments like this aren't satisfying when characters or Jedi just straight up do combos with straight up punches or... Yeah, Ahsoka just had enough of y'all crap straight punching you. You know she's not normal. When she's trapped, she can just jump that di high. Let's just say as Force users are psionic beings, they can go in your mind and trick your mind, Jedi mind trick type stuff. To make people change their mind if they wish. But a lot of people that have strong will can can resist this though. So it's not one of those things that's an end all be all. Thanks to her being a force user type character, she has super senses. One could say a form of precognition to help her block and attack better. On StarWars.com, they even talk about how Jedi's have certain reflexes thanks to their abilities and stuff. Even though she's not a Jedi no more, this should apply to her still because she's still a force user and a good fighter. She can sense events even if they're not on the same planet she's currently on. <laughs> It's a common thing when it comes to their reflex to be able to deflect blaster bolts. Their fighting speed really depends on what you perceive these blaster bolts to be when it comes to speed. She's one of those characters that like to use two laser swords at the same time. This gives you a great idea of their fighting speed. Even if there's multiple beings shooting at her with blaster bolts, she can reflect them back and deflect them constantly. One of the craziest craps is when this Order 66 crap was happening and it showed her reflex deflecting all this BS even though she's surrounded, which is absolutely crazy, showing her fighting speed. Her fighting speed is so crazy. It's just something she naturally does. Part of this could be enhanced with precognition, but she's definitely fast enough to deflect the mid-flight. When you add in the fact her cutting power is superhuman because her physicals are superhuman, on top of the laser sword, we've seen her use these lightsabers to cut through big vehicles. Droids can basically make her own entrance with the lightsaber. Lightsabers like this, using the force to cut big holes in the stuff when she needs to. Trees are literally butter <laughs> compared to her lightsaber cutting power, right? The heat of a lightsaber to be able to burn through stuff with her raw physical strength helps her be able to cut thick stuff like this in half with ease. The thing that makes these force users dangerous is being able to pick stuff up without even picking it up physically. Yeah, every force user is not created equal, but she's one of the higher ends, especially when she becomes an adult and stuff. We've seen her blast back a group of clone troopers. She can even do it in omnidirectional both side type stuff like that. Something like this comes in handy when you're outnumbered. Big droids like this she can blow away. Talking about blast power or area of effect. Even while young she does pretty good against a being like General Grievous. Even mixing in her sword combat with the force to blast them back. General Grievous somebody that's always giving top tier Jedi like Obi-Wan Kenobi issues. And look at all them lightsabers man that's hard to fight. These abilities come in handy when you're in like underwater situations and need to blast stuff away though. I will admit. Like this eel. Sewing open metal door she can blast like this. She can blast objects at you so hard where it cracks the wall behind you. Blast. Even occasions like this when she's young on a mission with Anakin on Adventures and Clone Wars, this big old stone wall, she just pulls it down. Look how thick it looks. Feats like this, it helps you get a real understanding of how strong these beings are when it comes to using telekinesis type stuff. Big vehicles like this, stuff that she wouldn't be able to do physically, she can move by using the force. Even in, when she's bounded by shock collar, she can break it apart with the force. She can break down pipes by simply using the force to break it apart. And she can even hold back ships with the force. Yeah, big ships that's trying to take off into space, you know, when Darth Maul was trying to use it, she's able to hold it back just like that. Doesn't this feat remind you of what Rey did with this ship in the live action movie? And similar to how Kylo Ren did it when they had a tug of war. It's occasions like holding that ship and occasions like this with Anakin where they're able to shield from all this debris. This has to be hundreds of tons of bull crap that they shield it from, meaning that she can both blast and shield with hundreds of plus tons of protection or blast with a hundred tons of raw power output. When it comes to blasting outward, this feat, for example, is something that's hard to calculate with the force. Her and some younglings working together to collapse this ice cliff to get in. As you can see, they use the force working together to move all of that. That's some big ice. 
But I will admit they are working together, helping her too. So it's hard to kind of get a ranking on this. How much work is she actually doing moving all of this? You know what I mean? We just know it's heavy as heck. I would say this has to be at least in the 10 plus ton range, you know, at least, right? Depending on how the weight is distributed. It's shown she can use the force to protect herself in a case like this with all these glass shards. Don't get it twisted. They can't be knocked out if their defense is down. So they have to constantly have their force force fields up or they can be knocked out. We've seen beings like Ventress battle Obi-Wan in the Clone War. With a raw force power, we know Ahsoka is comparable, especially since she was young when she did this. In the Ahsoka novel, there was some tanks. She had to bend the metal with the force itself, bringing the tank itself to a halt. You, know, you got dark side users like Inquisitors and stuff. They're not as strong as beings like, like Darth Vader though, because he's a Sith Lord level being. They're lower than him on the dark side in Inquisitors. The best way to get a real understanding of her might is when you think about her power compared to Inquisitor level beings, right? Or when you compare her force ability to beings like Kanan, for example, I think we all could agree that she's above, but just in case you don't believe me right quick, Look at Kanan's performance against Inquisitor level beings like this, for example. Look how they was able to use the force on him and make him helpless like this. Look what happens when Ahsoka fights this same entity, this same Inquisitor that handled Kanan, for example, to see the difference when it comes to raw power, right? Having her yield. Like it was so bad, she straight up overpowered this Inquisitor like this and disarming her. So this being Kanan had trouble with this Inquisitor that Ahsoka did not have trouble with at all. Further implying that she's way above him like we all should have agreed already. And if you still had your doubts, remember who Ahsoka used to be trained under? Vader himself. And look how Vader handles Inquisitors, making them murk each other. Even the technically the greatest Inquisitor of them all, the Grand Inquisitor, couldn't do nothing with Vader. It just proves there's a gap between Inquisitor level and Sith Lord level. Had the Grand Inquisitor helpless. Inquisitors like the second sister literally can't move when Vader's using the force on her to where she's frozen in place to get murked. You probably wonder why am I bringing up Vader? This video isn't about Vader, right? But when you look at Ahsoka's performance against Vader, she actually gives them a run for the money technically to for one can say a really good fight. Look how she pushes them back. In this occasion, Ahsoka was fighting two Inquisitors, mixing in her sword combat with her blast. Boom. So back to this guy for a second. You're probably wondering why I'm bringing this guy up. Oh, a good idea of her force ability. You got to look at the heavy stuff these beings like this can move. Him and Ezra Bridger, the stuff they can move with the force. Ahsoka can do better. Speaking of Ahsoka, she's right here with these characters too. <laughs> Look how small these beings look in comparison to this big bullcrap mountain-sized building-sized structure they're able to move with the force. When we're talking about narrative and writer intent, she's narratively speaking meant to be above these beings. When it comes to her and Ezra Bridger, she's literally seen as like a mentor and a person to train them to get better. More implications that she's above them. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. She's a veteran. Ezra Br Bridger still has stuff to learn. I know these two is working together in this, but if they can do this, she can definitely do this or more. Mountain-sized type structures, right? So if he can manipulate mountain-sized temples, Ahsoka should have that ability as well when it comes to stuff she can lift or manipulate with her force ability. Or this could translate into just raw blast power. That means she'll be able to lift millions of tons of force, or one could say billions if we're being honest because mountains can weigh up to billions of tons. Do you think she has the blast power to lift billions of tons or blast with billions of tons of force? I mean, look how Vader is manhandling these beings that Ahsoka is able to give a decent fight. Not saying she's as strong as Vader, but she's not that far off, right? Look how they're just getting handled. Getting handled to the point where he's literally about to make Ezra Bridger stab himself with his own lightsaber. That's crazy. Meanwhile, when Ahsoka is fighting Vader, he can't just spam force chokes on her because her force power is able to defend it to a certain degree to where it's actually some difficulty. Long extended type of fight. One on one. Seriously have to respect this 2v1 versus Inquisitors that Ahsoka is able to pull off. Look at this occasion of her blocking two Inquisitor attacks at the same time with her strength. Then pushes them off. During a fight with an Inquisitor, breaks the lightsaber. As an adult, she does pretty well against Maul, though I will admit. A Sith Lord level being. Whenever you don't see Vader manhandling a character by just spamming the Force to let you know they're strong in the Force when it comes to defense and stuff, that's like Ahsoka. There's even occasions where Inquisitors are such pathetic compared to Vader, they don't, he doesn't even bother to use his lightsaber against them. But here's Ahsoka blocking it with a back's turned from Vader. Tell me what Inquisitor can do that. Okay, so we know the Inquisitors are below Vader. You remember Darth Sidious, one of the mightiest, a being that is comparable to Vader? He's the freaking emperor, and he's technically the head of the entire empire. Somebody that can deal with Yoda. Tell me why Palpatine was like using some Sith magic fire and Ahsoka was able to shield from all this crap. One could say kind of absorb it with the force, raw power she can produce. Tell me she ain't top tier.
and up there with the big leagues. I mean, if that's not enough evidence for you when it comes to her raw power output, when it comes to countering Sidious' ability, you know how they have fans ask questions and stuff like that. It was literally stated with the writer intent that she was meant, especially as an adult, to be up there with Vader or the Emperor. Those are the only beings that can really give her a real issue as in a full-grown adult. This kind of lets you know how the writers intend for her to be in the hierarchy. So I think it's pretty obvious that she's a beast and she's at least a Sith Lord level being. She might not be the strongest of all the Sith Lords, but she's strong enough to hang with them for quite a bit. Something Inquisitors can't do. If she was to use her hands and reach out with the force, she could blast buildings apart with ease. This is how I see it if there was a power grid. Let's just say all these force users are comparable to one another. And if we assume that Ahsoka is somewhere near their range when it comes to raw power output, even if they are a little bit higher, she's still up there, if that makes sense to you. So if all these beings are Sith Lord level beings, we know Luke Skywalker is for sure. Remember what Luke Skywalker did. In canon comic lore, Luke Skywalker in a fit of rage was able to blast with so much raw power, the entirety of a Star Destroyer was able to get shook. Yeah, them big old giant ships known as the Star Destroyers. Star Destroyers don't exist in real life, but here's like a fan-made image of how it would look if it was floating over a city when it comes to the pure size of it. It's literally the size of a small town. And in the Force Unleashed novel that's technically not canon, they give an official weight for it in this Legends version of a Star Destroyer, which I don't see wouldn't be any different from the canon one when it comes to weight. But yeah, it's not canon weight. But whatever, in this novel, they say a Star Destroyer weighs a million tons. Even if that's not canon, if we use common sense and look at the size of it, this doesn't seem like an exaggeration. When you look at the Star Destroyer compared to buildings, when you know buildings can weigh up to hundreds of thousands of tons, this thing weighing a million tons definitely seems realistic. Matter of fact, that seems like not heavy enough if we're being honest. But anyway, if we're to take this seriously and assume a Sith Lord level being, like Luke Skywalker level being, Darth Vader level beings can shake millions of tons, here's more fan-made edits of how a Star Destroyer would look if it was in like a New York City or something. Like, it's literally the size of a small town. I obviously think Luke Skywalker is personally above Ahsoka, obviously. But even so, I think he's a good benchmark on getting an understanding of how strong the top tiers are when it comes to the Force users. If he can shake something this big, I don't see any reason on why somebody like Ahsoka can at least shake it just a tad bit with her Force raw power output. I think it's fair to say she can make a million ton shake, even though I think Luke Sidious and Vader are above her. That's fine. She shouldn't be that far. Maybe she's 80% them or 60% them or something. You know, that's fair, right? But on a serious note, if she really could shake something that's big, this would almost be like the equivalent of having the kind of force ability, or one could say blast power, to produce raw power on a scale like this, wiping out several buildings with ease like a small town wipeout. And when Palpatine came back in the newer movies, we're not even going to get on his blast power in that. I feel like the better special effects get, the more we're going to see over the top feats like this in live action of Palpatine blasting this big old fleet in the sky with lightning. This just gives you like a visual picture on how Sith Lord and top tier Jedi can do when it comes to the force abilities they can produce. I mean, Luke and Ahsoka have technically met in canon, so maybe we get a duel or something or a friendly sparring session maybe? I mean, who knows? How strong do you think Ahsoka is? How strong do you think she became throughout her evolution? I guess this is the result if your teacher or master is Anakin Skywalker himself. You get mighty force users like this. But before I get going, I've got to say thanks for the donations, everybody. Helps out a lot. Respect Ahsoka Tano. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.